Hey everybody, it's Brittany with Divine Bloom and I have a question for you. Have you ever been disappointed? Be honest, tell the truth, shame the devil. I know I sure have been disappointed. I've had jobs that disappointed me. I've been disappointed in myself. I've had family members that disappointed me. I've had friends that disappointed me. And if I could be 100% honest with you, there have been times in my life where I felt as if God had disappointed me. See, disappointment happens when our expectations don't meet up with reality. So your expectations are somewhere way up here, but reality is way down here. You expected that you would have been promoted by now, but reality is you're constantly overlooked and you're in the same position. You expected that you would have been married by now, right? But the reality is every man that you date is a complete fool. You expected that 2020 would be the year of vision, the best year ever. But the reality is you're stuck at home. Your holiday plans are canceled. They had to change. Your expectations didn't meet reality. And here comes disappointment. Disappointment can hurt. Disappointment can be painful. And the enemy, he will want nothing more than for you to stay stuck, to stay unmotivated, to stay lonely, to stay hurt in that disappointment and not move forward. But today that changes. Today I want to show you how you push forward past disappointment. I want to share with you three things that you could do when you find yourself disappointed. So stay tuned. <laughs> So today we're talking about pushing forward past disappointment. And if you want to push past disappointment, the very first thing that you have to do is acknowledge and admit that you're disappointed. Listen, God can't heal what you don't reveal to him. Let me say that again. God can't heal what you don't reveal to him. And some of us are still hurting and we're still in pain simply because we don't confess to God that we're hurt. We don't confess to him that we're disappointed. Listen, you can be honest with God. He can handle your hurt. He can handle your pain. He can handle your disappointment. In the book of Ruth, chapter one, grab your Bibles. I don't want you to think I made this up, but we meet a lady by the name of Naomi. And there had been a famine in the land and Naomi loses everything. She lost her husband, she lost her two sons, everything gone in an instant. But Naomi did something in verse 21 that some of us fail to do. She expressed to God her hurt, her pain, and her disappointment. In fact, she was so disappointed that she told others, don't even call me Naomi anymore. She said that the Lord had dealt very bitterly with her. Have you ever felt like that? Like the Lord has dealt very bitterly with you? Like God, why did you deal me this stack of disappointments in my life? Have you been there? Well, do like Naomi did and cry out to God and let him know that you're disappointed. This disappointment, it initiated her grieving and her grieving led to a breakthrough. And her breakthrough led to a blessing by way of Ruth and Boaz. I say all this to say when we acknowledge and admit to God that we're disappointed, God can heal us and he can make us whole. So the sooner you admit and acknowledge you're disappointed, the sooner your healing can take place. All right, so step two, after you admit and acknowledge that you're disappointed, step two is you have to believe that there's purpose in your disappointment. See, disappointment can pull us closer to God or it can push us further away from him. And oftentimes, God uses our disappointment to develop us so that ultimately it could push us to our destiny. Believe that there's purpose in your disappointment. See, you can do one of two things. You can focus and dwell on the disappointment. You can focus on why me, Lord? Why did this have to happen to me? Or you could choose and believe that God can use your disappointment and still use it for his good. There's purpose in your disappointment. According to Romans 8, 28, God uses everything. He uses everything, the good stuff, the bad stuff, the pain, the hurt, the failure, the shame, the disappointment. He uses it all for our good. See, God wastes nothing. He uses it all for our good. You can believe that or you can continue to dwell and focus on the disappointment, but the choice is yours. Step three, you ready for it? All right, step three is if you wanna push forward past disappointment, step three is you have to choose to align your will to God's will. Take time to listen and hear God's voice and trust God's timing. Listen, oftentimes we find ourselves disappointed because our timetables don't line up with God's timetable. But according to Isaiah 55, eight and nine, it says that my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways, your ways declares the Lord. And Proverbs 16 and nine says a man's heart plans his course, but it's the Lord. He's the one who orders his steps. 
In other words, you can plan out your life with deadlines, married at 25, babies at 30, retired at 55. Those might be your plans, but maybe God's plan is that you have your own business at 25 and you travel the world by 30 and then you're married at 40 or 50. Listen, I have experienced the pain and the frustration and the hurt of not getting things when I, when I thought that I should receive them. I know what that's like. But what I do know about God is this. God has a way of restoring time that you thought you may have lost. And I know this for sure. God may not come when you want him to, but he is always on time. So allow God to use your story for his glory. See, God may very well be using your disappointment to restart, to rebrand, or redefine your life. So number one, acknowledge that you're disappointed. Number two, believe that there's purpose in your disappointment. And number three, choose to align your will with God's will. And most importantly, friends, stay rooted in God. I love you and we will talk again soon. Peace.